Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to do something a little different. It's not resin related at all. I want to make one of those really cool, creepy, spooky looking uh, candle jars. So, I know, it's a lot of stuff here. Um, my initial plan was to do two of them, um, but halfway through I realized that the one just wasn't working and there was kind of no real way to savage, savage it, salvage it. So we're just going to do one. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I know that I want these two particular images. One is the witch's hat and then the other one is the wooden cutout with the spooky written on it that you've seen. I want them on the jar. So I want that to be where the light is going to come through. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some painter's tape on my cutting board and put down a few pieces. I'm going to then trace the image onto the painter's tape and then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just kind of cut it out. Um, really simple, not a lot of difficulty to it. You just need to be very careful if you use an X-Acto blade because they are super crazy sharp so that you don't cut yourself. Um, the only other thing thing that you need to be careful of is when you are taking it off remember in which way you lay down like I did the painters tape and when I did it I kind of put one layer over the neck so each piece is kind of layered up a little bit so you just don't want to peel it off in the way that you put it on so that you're not getting it in like for me it was three different pieces so that it all stays together if that makes sense um you'll see here in a second when I'm done kind of cutting out it didn't go through all of the layers completely um, how I peel it off. Um, so then what I'm going to do after this is the first coat of spray paint on my jar is going to be that frosted white look. And I'm just going to go kind of all over the jar. I, I, it doesn't matter if it gets on the top or the bottom. I want to make sure that I get in the spaces that where it's going to be because if not, then when I paint over it, then I'm going to have clear jar and I don't want it completely clear. I don't want you to be able to see through it. I just want the light to be able to come through it the other way. Uh, so after this has been dried and it's, you know, only took like maybe 15, 20 minutes to get totally dry. Then what I'm going to do is I've already cut out spooky and it took a long way, a long time to do it. So I, I didn't want to put you guys through all of that. So I cut it out now and it's just a matter of kind of peeling it and coaxing it off of that cutting board in one piece so that it doesn't, you know, rip and, and get deformed and all of that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is Spooky's going on one side of the jar. The witch's hat is going on the other side of the jar. After you take whatever images or whatever you want to put on it, you just need to figure out where it is on the jar that you want to place it. So I want mine in the middle, one on one side, one on the opposite side. So I'm just going to go and take the tape back and I'm going to kind of center it and then push it down. Now, because these jars that I'm using are the bald like canning jars and they do have that embellishment on them where it's kind of puffed up in the glass, uh, make sure if you're using any kind of texturized jar like that, that you are pushing down on that tape really, really, really well to get it to stick well. The reason I'm saying this is that second jar that I was going to do, when I put the image on that I had on it, I didn't push down hard enough around all of those little raised um, edges and whatever. And when I painted it with the black spray paint afterwards, the paint leaked down through all of those little holes and grooves and stuff and it just totally destroyed the image so much to the point that I, I couldn't even save those one that particular one. Now this one what I'm doing now is I'm just get I've got some black uh, chalkboard paint and I am going over it really really well. Hindsight I should have done it in two coats instead of spraying it on as heavily as I did because it did cause it to run and that is where the issue came with the paint running down the back of the tape. So, 
if you're going to do this, I recommend doing it in two coats, not taking the lazy way out and just trying to do it in one. Um, after that was dry, another like maybe 15, 20 minutes, I took the tape off. Now I'm going in, because those edges are not clean, because of the runoff that I had with the paint, I can't leave it like this. And I, I don't think I would want to anyway. So what I did was I took some of my glow-in-the-dark powder, I took some glitter, and I took my gloss varnish and kind of made a paste out of it. And I'm just going over the outline of the hat, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the spooky. And I'm kind of using it for two different reasons one to make it more interesting because just the black like that it, it's pretty boring so this is going to add some color add some pop it'll glow in the dark now too which is kind of a neat feature and it's also going to cover up all those rough edges that I got I did try to take a paint marker or a sharpie marker and go around the edge uh prior to this it didn't work out the greatest so this kind of works a lot better and you can see it hides all the edges I can make it a little bit thicker where I needed to to cover any imperfections that came on it all that good stuff so now while that side is drying because obviously I can't do the opposite side I have these cute little sugar skulls that I got off of Amazon and I am going to paint them again using my glow powder and just mixing it in that uh, dollar store paint that I got in the eggnog color because I kind of I kind of want it to not be super bright it's almost the same color as the wood but it will glow now it's not going to glow as vividly as it would like as the spooky and the witch's hat are going to glow because it's dulled down a little bit with paint, but it does have some glowy aspects to it. Now it's time for the spooky. So I'm doing the same thing that I did on the other side. I'm just taking the glow powder, I'm taking the glitter and the gloss varnish, making it into the paste and putting it all around the ghost and the letters and all of that good stuff. And you can see a little bit more on this one, all of the imperfections on where the paint kind of rolled down this side was a little worse than the other side but still not as bad to the point where i couldn't salvage this one i i definitely can and one of the things that i like about this it's versatile so yeah this is a halloween one but you could do it for any time of the year really if you want to you can do it for christmas you can do it just a fall one you could do it for easter you could do it for whatever your heart's desire, you know, they sell those cutouts, there's stencils that you could use, there's, there's a multitude of different ways that you can come up with the image, you know, we all know I can't draw, so some kind of stencil -y, something that I can trace is more along the lines of the way I have to go about it, but if you can draw, I mean, my god, you could do anything, and then, you know, just think, there's so many different ones. Like, just the ones that I got from the dollar store. I got the spooky one. I think it was a bat, a bat, a bat, a bat, a bat, a cat, a witch's hat. I got the sugar skulls off of Amazon. You know, you could do this project and do it for cheap. And then come up with different uses for those wooden cutouts. I know... One of you guys had said, oh, they were excited about something that I was going to do with the cutouts because they buy them all the time, but they didn't know what to use them for. You can use them for a multitude of different things. It doesn't have to be just a one and done type deal. Oh, I painted that spooky wood, so now I'm done. No, use it for whatever, you know, and that's what's great about this. Like for Halloween, you can do 10 different jars and line them up going down your steps and put a real candle in or put an LED candle in. You know, the, the, the neat thing about this is that you don't have to use the LED candles because it's not resin related. It's glass, so it can withstand the heat. However, you know, safety wise, if you're putting it outside, maybe, but do you, you know what I mean? Like you can go all kinds of stuff and it doesn't have to be a mason jar either. Like you can upcycle and recycle stuff that you have laying around the house. Like you got a pickle jar, use your pickle jar. 
Do you know what I mean? Like, instead of just throwing something away, you can reuse different things and make different sizes and different shapes and different whatever. Like, there's there's just so much that you can do with the stuff that you kind of have laying around the house, too. You know, it doesn't all have to cost crazy amounts of money to be able to do something like this. And I think that they turn out really, really cute. Like, I, re I really do. And it's a relatively cheap project to do too. And on top of that, if it's something that maybe you want to do with your kids or your grandkids or something to that effect, this is something that they could definitely do. You know, you could, Hell, you could even do imprints of your kids' hands on it. You know, same thing with the tape. Just draw them out like you used to do when you were in kindergarten, when you used to trace your hand and whatever. Cut it out. Put that on. Different kinds of gifts. Like, there's so many. I have so many ideas for so much that you can do with this kind of stuff. And it has that kind of older, kind of country-type style look to it too, which is also kind of nice, especially if you're into that kind of decor, you know, like everything that I got for this pretty much I got from the dollar store. Yeah, that was the cat thing. It was terrible. Ignore that. Um, but yeah, the main part of the stuff, like I got a lot of the stuff from the dollar store and it's stuff that, you know, like I said, cheap. Now, the twine I didn't, but still, I got it off of Timu, and I, I believe it was less than a dollar, too. But that's all I'm doing right here, is I'm just wrapping some of this twine around the top part of the glass and hot gluing it in certain places. Um, I did it at first at the beginning, and then I'm going to wrap it, glue it at the end, and then there's a couple of spots later on that kind of pop off at the top that, you know, you just need a little touch of glue, and then you're good. And that's it for this part. Like, super, super simple. Doesn't take a lot of time. Like, it really, really does not. And they're cute. And they're homemade. You know? Like, I enjoy making homemade stuff. I enjoy getting homemade things. I think it's that much better when it's handmade by somebody as opposed to factory produced and everybody has the same thing. Nobody's going to have this jar but me. Even if you made the same exact jar that I did, there's going to be something different about it. You know? So anyway, um, so now with these little sugar skulls, what I did is I just took my paint marker and I am going along the edges just to kind of darken it up a little bit. I didn't do anything with the back of it. You're not going to see it anyway. Um, but just to kind of finish off that edge. So I did that with both of them. And then I'm going to take my twine and I'm going to connect them both to the same piece of twine. Just one is going to be a little bit higher than the other one. I'm going to tie it onto the twine that I already have wrapped around the top part of it. And then that's it. That part's done. Now, what I want to do is that lace tablecloth that I got from the dollar store I am going to take that I cut a piece out that will fit around you know the top side of it and I'm just going to really messily apply it I don't want it to be perfect I don't want it to be all pristine and pretty this is a Halloween piece so it needs to look kind of gross I guess you know like, I'm not going for perfection here. I just want to kind of shove it on. So I'm taking the bottom part, kind of getting that with the hot glue, and then I'm going to take a little bit more, and while that glue's drying, I'm going to take the top part of it and just kind of stick it to it. Again, not doing it for perfection, just putting it on there. I want it to have that messy kind of just eh look to it. So that's all I'm going to do real quick, all the way around, dab it, and then dab it on again just to kind of get that glue to set on the rest of it. And bam, done with that. The lace just kind of adds a little something something to it, I guess. And it's just not so bland. It dresses it up a little without making it look too pretty. Because I'm not going for pretty. Not at all. And that's it. We are done with this part. Super simple. Now, I do recommend... And this is, the, 
I'm probably a little behind the times, but the little pink thing I have on my finger, it's great. It's I have never until this project used one before. I didn't even know they existed. And I have always just dealt with burning my fingers on the hot glue. And this really saves you from it. And they were at the dollar store. It was like three of them for a dollar. So that was fantastic. All right. So now what I did was the uh, Halloween branches that I picked up at the Dollar Tree like several projects ago. I still have some left and I only bought one of them. And I just tore off a couple pieces, kind of cut it down to size how I wanted it and stuck that on there too, just as a little added bonus, I guess. And then if you've seen any of my other videos where I made some little Halloween figures out of that pink silicone mold that I used, uh, these are just pieces that I've had left over. I had leftover resin. I make random stuff, you know, whatever mold happens to be laying around. So I made these and never used them in any other projects. So I thought, why not? It will hide where the glue is and the branches are all kind of like coming together. It'll hide it and kind of dress it up a little bit, you know, give it a little more. Uh, the one thing I did realize with this, I, I guess it's silicone. I think it's silicone, the little pink thing on my finger. It, it sticks to the hot glue. Like every time I would pull my finger, I have to fight with it to get it to not stick to the, the little cap thingy. That was a little annoying. I don't know. Maybe it's just me and not knowing what I'm doing, which is possible. But there it is. Finished project. Didn't take super long. I mean, maybe an hour total time. But again, this is the first time I've ever made one of these. I like it. It looks really cute with a candle. And I just used an LED tea light candle. Uh, that's it for this one, guys. Hope you like it. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I've got some interesting ideas. I think I'm going to start here coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.